yesterday I promised that I would give a better close-up look at the stuff that I got while we were all out shopping. Was that fun or what? I really thought that it was. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the uh, videos I did yesterday about my um, Walmart adventures. Well, Walmart with a special guest appearance by Jerry Zarnarama. Um, so, if uh, you want to go back and look at those so you'll know how all this came about, you can certainly do that. But you don't need to because they're not like a prerequisite to understand <laughs> this video because it's not that complicated. <laughs> it's a haul video. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, let's just get to it because uh, you've really, you've probably seen most of these except for some uh, last minute mind changing that went on when I wasn't filming. This was the first Walmart store that I went to. Um, and it's the one where I first saw all the smash books and I did end up getting one of the little ones. These were five dollars. So I went ahead and picked this one up. And I have already decided I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. I am going to give it away. Did you know it's been almost a year since I've done a drawing? A draw, a drawing? I haven't done a drawing for a year. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it had been that long. I, I haven't given anything away in like a year. How awful is that? I mean, I, I don't guess I'm required to, but I guess it might be nice now and then. So I'm going to give this away. I'm going to have a, a drawing, and I don't know when, I think probably late August-ish. Don't hold me to that, though. Maybe sooner, I don't know. I just, because I, I want to get a bunch of stuff together for this, because I would like to, I really want to, like, um, you know, not fill in the book, but add some things to it that... You treat it kind of like it was my book. You know, if this was my book, um, I would want a pocket right there. So I may put a pocket right there. And and if this was my book, I might want an extra page right here. Because who puts two graph pages back to back like that? That's ridiculous. This is poor planning, smash people. I want one in there to separate those two. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that I... Did it again. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about is um, just add some small things to it. But, um, you know, where it's still a blank smash book that whoever gets it can fill in. And I also want to include a whole bunch of little things with it. Some journaling cards and some post-its and maybe some tabs and maybe some tape. Uh, I don't know what all else because I haven't looked. <laughs> but I'm positive I have excess around here that uh, someone else needs. So, stay tuned for that. Um, these little things are, do you know what these are? Because I kind of knew what these were. I mean, I knew what they were, but I didn't quite know how they worked until I got them home. And they're little, um, I don't know what they call them, inserts. This is two packages that I bought. I just stuck them in the same deal. But they're for your smash book. They're for the big size, you know. And you put them in between some pages and then in the big smash book you know that goes there and this one will go on the bottom one and then it's got adhesive so you can attach it right there to that page and right there to that page and then right here it's got adhesive in the middle so that you can add your own page to your smash book so you know if this was a page you would just, you could add an extra page in, like that. That's all it is. We used to call it tip-in. Do they still call it a tip-in? I'm not sure. That's what we used to call it back in the day. Um, so anyway, got those. I may give some of those away, too. I could um, cut them down to fit the little book. Ooh, that's a good idea. I may do that. Okay, I got some more of these because I don't know why, but right now I'm really liking arrows. And these are arrows, and they're those kind of see through um, post it stickies. Do I have glare? You probably can't see that they are see through. But that's all they were. I think they were $2 for the package. 
but I liked them. This one was a dollar, dollar something, dollar fifty maybe, and it's just these little flag things. And then I, I did get the blank, it says it's called blank, but the uh, non-themed um, journaling deal. Oh, my battery light's flashing. How funny. It was so nice to have not done that all day yesterday. I'm glad it waited till today. And since it was so respectful, I'm going to go ahead and take care of it right now. I'm going to change out my battery and I'll be right back. Okay, my camera's happy again. We're all happy. Um, let's see. I picked up one of these. It was a couple of bucks. It's, another, it's got the pen on that end. It's kind of a light blue. And then the glue on that end, which I don't hear everybody rave about these. I don't really understand. I guess it's nice and convenient to have them both right there together. Yeah, that's probably it. This is in the wrong stack. Uh, I got this one was three fifty maybe, and it's the the Smashbook brand um, stamp deal. It's got the date, and then it has these little sayings here. This is just really cute. I've seen this all over the place, and everyone who has one loves it. So I got one so that I can love it too. And then I picked up these woo, washi tapes which I'm loving. This one has all of these um, all different patterns on it. And then this one is the black and white pokey dot. And then this one has just all kinds of different stuff on it. And let me tell you what, I bet this is why these were on clearance. You see what it's doing here? It's sticking to itself. If you have a roll that does this, don't throw it away. Stick it in your microwave for about 10 seconds and then peel it and if you just kind of keep peeling it and kind of tear as you peel it'll start to fix itself. You'll lose maybe an inch or two of tape but it will fix itself and you know and as if you leave it set for a while and then use it again you might have to stick it back in the microwave but 10 seconds in the microwave will fix that problem of it sticking to itself. So don't throw your tape away. Don't think that it's bad and throw it out because it'll still work. And I think that's why a lot of these end up on the clearance rack because they start sticking to themselves and um, nobody wants to microwave it for 10 seconds to fix it. And I just don't understand that. Solve the problem. Okay. Um, and I picked up these glues these um, glitter glues because I'm glitter glue poor or I was but I'm not anymore because these are just fabulous colors or I like them anyway and um, I've already tested them out they work great and they were they were some of the 97 cent stuff Oops. sorry um, and this I've already been practicing with cutting stencils Okay, it's a beast. <laughs> um, it, my, I don't even, I don't even know which way would be better. I can't do it with an exacto knife. I have um, pieces missing out of my wrist. I have some ligaments missing, and I have, I got other, I got issues. I got a nice metal plate in there, and, but I don't have any um, hand strength, wrist strength, and you know, if I strain too hard in, to, when, to try to use it, uh, it hurts. So I'm, sometimes I'm limited as to what I can do. Pressing down hard enough on a on exacto knife to get it to cut through this is not happening for me. I, I physically cannot do it. I can do a hot knife and that's what I've been practicing with. Okay, it's a little bit trickier than I thought. <laughs> um, I'll do a video on that, a, a separate one, to show you um, what I've been playing with and I, I have had two, two successful failures. I, I failed so completely that they were a huge success in the failure department. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm learning and I'm figuring out it's, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to have to have the right tool I'm afraid <laughs> and uh, I have the right tool I don't have the right attachment for it so I'll explain that later but that's what that was that was for stencils okay second Walmart store 
is where I got these things. Lots more Smashbooky stuff. Um, this one, the Smashbook headband, which is not a headband. It, it goes around the book, your Smashbook, or your journal, your junk journal, you know, whatever. And it's got these little slots where you can put your several different kinds of pins. Because, you know, they they discovered, we could have told them this, right? One pin ain't going to do it. This is great with the glue and everything, but we need more than one pin. Am I right? What were they thinking? Come on. You got to have pins. So this has, I don't even know, probably six, six slots for pins. And it goes around your book. Uh... Uh, oh yeah, I got the, the little alphabet sets. I love this one because it's all kind of grungy looking. And then this one's cute. But those are just the right size for um, stamping and journals. And then, of course, the baby duck tapes. What's a baby duck? I have gone blank. A duckling. A duckling. Oh, I'm so disappointed they didn't call these duckling tape. Oh my gosh, I'm going to call, who makes duct tape? Is it, is it a 3M brand? No, it's Duck Brand. I am going to call Duck Brand and tell them that they should have talked to me before they did this because this is very obviously duckling tape, not duct tape. <laughs> it's all about marketing. I got these little arrow-shaped brads because I don't know why I'm on an arrow binge right now. Um, it may have some deeper meaning in my life, or it may just be that I'm sucked into all the arrow-shaped things that are out there. I don't know. These are little post-its. They were, I think, a dollar, dollar fifty. These are. That goes. Uh, I don't know what I did. Okay, these are little corner things. I think they were a dollar, or they were in that 97 cent bin, 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 where you can, um, you know, it's got adhesive here and here, and you stick it down, and then you've got the little slot. Uh, they were cute. It was an impulse purchase, really. These napkins I showed on the video, I didn't know how much they were, and I found the price checker machine, and they were 50 cents. Why I didn't go back and get a second pack, I will never know. <laughs> but I just got the one. <laughs> so there's only 20 in there. It's a small pack, but, um, you know, 50 cents is good enough for 20. And then when I was over in the fabric, this is the store that had like six aisles, both sides of the aisle, of fabric. They had tons of fabric. And then they had this one section on an aisle that had tons of fat quarters. And some of them were the, you know, the stacks of fat quarters, but they had some singles, these fat quarter singles, and they were 97 cents. And look, I just thought those just went really well together. I mean, totally different patterns, but they have some of the same colors and kind of that same almost, I don't know, boho look. I don't know what I can make where I could use a piece of fabric and a napkin together other than a book cover. But I'm going to find something because I like those two together. So I got that. And then I grabbed two more just because they were cute. And I thought those two um, looked cute together for something. They would make a good book cover. And these are usually just the right size for book covers, these fat quarters. Let's see. I forget the measurements. You know, people who sew or quilt, they'll tell you exactly how big they are. But me... I will show you that they are that big, precisely. And that's usually just about right for your average journal or two. So, got those. Um, this was some more smashy stuff. These are, this was a pack of pockets. I think they were a dollar fifty, and you put them in your book, you know. I got two of those. And this one is like a little monthly calendar pocket thing. That reminded me. I have been wanting to mention, and I keep forgetting, but when I was in Michael's, whenever it was, week, two weeks ago? week ago. Oh, was it Michael's? Yeah, yeah, it was Michael's. They had a lot of 
calendars out. Um, and I've been seeing calendars everywhere, and I think because there are some calendars that I guess they end in June and then go from July to the end of the year, so you know there's there's a big calendar sale right now. But um, Michaels has a lot of new 2014 calendars too. Some of them are really really cute, and they have the planners and everything. But some of the ones that caught my eye were, in fact, they were up kind of by the checkout corral. <laughs> And they were wall calendars, and they were the the size. They were really almost looked like the size of a composition book. And I could just see buying one of those because they were really cheap. You know, they were like I don't know, maybe a couple bucks. Buying one of those and using those calendar pages to put inside your composition book to make your own planner. That way, you don't have to print out a bunch of calendar pages and you don't have to draw your own, you can use those. I, you know, had I seen them before I started making my own, I probably would have used them. They were that cute. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're wanting to make your own planner but you don't want to, you know, use a bunch of ink printing stuff out, um, you don't want to draw it, you don't want to buy pre-printed sheets, check out the calendars at Michael's. Michael should just send me a dang check is all I can say. These, okay, I saw these at the first store, but I just kind of glanced over them and didn't pay much attention because when they were hanging, I thought, you know, just at first glance, they looked like treat bags, you know? You know the cellophane treat bags, like used for birthday parties and stuff? And I just kind of glanced over them and went, oh, I don't need those, move on. And then I saw them again at the second store, and that time I actually looked a little harder and read what it was and picked it up and saw, oh, how clever. They're little pretty printed Ziploc baggies that you can put little mementos in and then, you know, stick them inside your smash book. So you've got a little thing there. And I thought that was just adorable. And the, <coughs> excuse me, the colors and the patterns are really cute. So these were $1.50, I think. Yeah, these were $1.50. Yeah, because this is their package right here. And um, so I really like that because these, you know, this is something different. This is not just another variation of the same old, same old. So I'm going to have fun with those. And I kept my packaging on some of the Smash products. See these? These were the pockets in those bags. It's got a, you probably can't see, but it has just a very faintly printed kind of orange color grid on it. And all you got to do is, you know, cut off the printing part, cut it into um, rectangles, and you've got instant journaling cards. So, thank you, Smash people. Okay, that does it for Walmart, and then my last stop was Jerry's. Oops. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, I bought this because every time I go in there, I smell it, and I like the way it smells. And it's brush cleaner for your brushes. Um, I paint with a credit card most of the time, but I glue with brushes sometimes. And um, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to see how well it works. I usually just put some a little squirt of dish soap in the corner in the sink and then do my brush like that. But this stuff says that it will remove dried oil paint from your paintbrush. I don't believe it. And since I don't oil paint, I really probably won't have an opportunity to test it out. But I figure if it says that, then it will probably do pretty good on my dried Mod Podge, don't you think? I do. I got another roll of artist tape because I started to run low and this is some of the this is the stuff that I like to use to paint and stamp on to make kind of that homemade washi tape or decorative tape and I also sometimes use it on um, when I'm working on a journal page if there's something on the other side of it that I don't want it to get all messed up I'll put this tape around the edge of the completed page so that anything from the page I'm working on that seeps over the edge will get on the tape and not my page. I don't know if that made any sense at all. But anyway, that's what I use. Kind of like a painter's tape because when you peel it off, it, it doesn't uh, 
peel off your paper. It comes off clean. So, artist tape. I got, this was one of those um, fabric markers that was in the clearance bin. It was $1.60. I got black. You know, black's always a good one to try. And if I end up lacking it, I may go back for more. It says it's a permanent pigment ink. Dries instantly, non-toxic, water and chlorine resistant. Writes instantly on clothes. So, I don't know. I'm going to play with it. See if I deem it worthy of adding some friends to it. I picked this up. I don't even know why, but I'm glad that I did. I need it. I think I do. It's a um, it's an eraser to use on like drafting film and acetate. It says Sanford non-abrasive, non-smudging vinyl for erasing drafting film. Peel off magic rub. Okay, and it is just a little eraser. And the reason that I got it is because. It's basically just a pointy eraser. And there have been times when I have needed a pointy eraser and have not had exactly what I need. Because you know how sometimes when you're drawing an eyeball and you color in the pupil and then you want to just erase that little spot, you know, so you'll have the little white reflective thing? Here's your tool. Well, I think it is anyway. That's what I'm going to use it for. It was just a dollar something, so, you know, it was a dollar just <laughs> to erase the highlight spot on pupils. <laughs> totally justified. <laughs> uh, okay. I stared at the uh, Liquitex paint marker display long enough that one of them did speak to me. <laughs> it was this one. It's a yellow oxide. It's um, close, as close as they had to like a yellow ochre. And I have a teal, not a teal, but the cobalt turquoise one. So I thought these two would work nicely together. So I got me another one of those. And the whole reason I went in is because I was out of citrusol. Last time I got the 8 ounce bottle and it took the whole thing to do that one National Geographic. So this time I got the 16 ounce bottle of the citrus soft concentrate and at Jerry's it was it was eleven something. Eleven seventy seven. And okay these I talked about already I think. Did I? Or I've just thought about them so much that it felt like I talked about them. Alright. <clears throat> these are the ones that I saw on the clearance rack at Jerry's. And I bought them because um, they looked and acted a little bit like a gelato. And I wondered if they would be similar to that. Um, so I got them. I brought them home. It says solid poster paint. And it talks about how they have a high covering power. They're quick drying. They don't wrinkle the paper. They're solvent free. You don't need to put a sealer on them. Da -da 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 -da. So <clears throat> someone who... Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who, but someone commented on one of the shopping videos. Then they said that it might have been a product from the UK. They knew what they were talking about. It, they, this is from Spain. Um, so these are made in Spain. And... <laughs> okay. I, and I realize they did the best they could. English is not their first language. There are going to be little, you know, quirky things in their literature because of that. I don't expect it to be perfect. But when I opened the box and I pulled them out, the first thing I did was look at the brochure. Because I wanted to see, okay, are there instructions or suggestions? And it has, like, some of their other products in this same brand. And um, all of it, it's all printed, um, English and Spanish. I didn't really read that part. This part, not only did I read it, I graded it. This part's Spanish. I don't know enough Spanish to even be able to comment on that. But, okay, look at this. 
this got on my last nerve. And even though I understand they did the best they could, but this is really not even an English, it's not a language issue. This is, this is a, a, a typography issue. This is a graphic design issue. And someone needs to help them. And bless their hearts, okay, why? Why they put that orphan out there like that all by itself? You don't put an orphan, you don't do that. That's not good. I mean, seriously, the and should come here, the fun should come here, the clean comes here with way so that it's all evened out. I mean, that is just basic, <laughs> basic graphic design, basic typography 101. Don't leave any orphans. Okay, they should have known better. Now this, this is even true in Spanish, so, you know, I can't, I can't say it's the language thing. There is no space between the comma and the cardboard. That uh, You probably can't see it. It says for painting on paper, cardboard, wood, etc. They have the comma, the space, just like they're supposed to, except between paper and cardboard. They have paper, comma, cardboard, no space. Proofreading, people. Just proofreading is all it takes. And then, I don't know if they got maybe confused and and I can't really say that they got confused because no they didn't get confused right here it says silky finish protective glaze g-l-a-z-e -E, not necessary doesn't wrinkle paper protective glace g-l-a-c-e -E, not necessary no it's not acceptable C minus. And that was generous. I really felt like I was being generous to give them a C minus for those careless mistakes. <laughs> These people are going to hunt me down and shoot me. <laughs> I thought it was actually kind of funny. It was a little bit irritating. The graphic designer in me was just having a conniption fit. <laughs> but it was cute too because they did the best they could. Okay, these. I thought I might do like a side-by-side -side comparison of these and the gelatos. It was a little difficult because I don't have very many gelatos. These are all that I have and most of what I have, well, almost all of them really, are metallic. These are all metallic gelatos that I, I know I picked them up on clearance somewhere. And these are not metallic. So I can't really compare it would be like apples and oranges because they're different you know the texture's different uh, this is even different from the not metallic gelato these go on they're more pale they're lighter they're blendier you know. so I couldn't do an accurate comparison as if anyone would care but I did do an informal one and what I determined is let me show you the page I made. this is my, my little junk book where I put scraps and stuff. I made a background page upside down. Just um, putting the uh, these colors, uh, smushing them on here and then rubbing them around. On, I sometimes use a little uh, water brush to wet them so they would blend better. And <clears throat> This is all with these, and then I watered down the red and the black, and that glitter glue is still wet. Okay. And then just use my brush to do the, you know, uh, sprinkle thing. And um, they are, in some ways, they're better than gelatos. In other ways, they're not as good. So they're not something that would be a substitute for gelatos. They're not like a cheaper alternative. Um, I think they're different enough that you just need both. <laughs> if you have access to these, you need these because they're different enough from gelatos that, that um, you know, that makes it like a whole new different product, but they're similar enough that you can use the two together. Um, okay, let me show you. Let's find a blank <coughs> spot. Here we go. All I could really do is compare the black and the white, and let's just look at the black. The gelato. 
right? The, uh, I don't even know what you call it, Instant EduK Play Color. <laughs> okay, the first thing I noticed about them is that the, um, we'll what do I call them, let's just call them play colors. The play colors are actually seem to have more pigment in them than gel the gelato. They are much creamier, much creamier than the gelato is. These are just, they're, they're a pleasure to feel. Um, they're much more opaque, you know, a lot better coverage. Where they fall short is on the blendiness. And I think, I really feel like the gelatos blend easier and better. Dry, the gelatos blend smoother than these do. This kind of starts to dry and starts to set up pretty fast. I mean, it'll still blend if you get it right when you put it on there, but then it starts to set itself. Gelatos, not so much. You know, it dries slow. You got time to, you got time to mess around. And with the water, these, these will blend with water, but because they start to dry so fast, it can sometimes take more water to get them to blend. And they, to me, don't seem to blend as smooth as the gelatos. <coughs> the gelatos sort of, see, they blend smoother. And I think it's, it's probably mainly because the gelato doesn't dry, it doesn't set up as quickly as these do. So, as you can see, in my opinion anyway, they are not a cheaper alternative for the gelatos, but they are a very similar product that could definitely be used together. And if gelatos are, are outside of your budget range and you happen to have access to these, um, these would be great. Check Jerry, Jerry's website, Jerry's Artorama, and I don't know if they have them online or not, but check and see, because um, I, I don't even know what his shipping prices are, but I would imagine they're probably pretty decent. <clears throat> okay, so that is all, I think. Um, we have company coming in a couple of days, and um, they'll be here through the weekend. So I probably won't be doing many videos during that time unless I can talk them into letting me videotape their most personal moments because that would be fun. So it might be a few days and hopefully when I come back I will have perfected the art of cutting out your own stencils in a way that doesn't hurt um, or burn your house down because I'm using heat tools and it's dangerous. Okay, that's it. The end.